Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video. And guys, you hopefully by now already know how bullish I am on XRP. I have shouted out numerous times on this channel that it's most likely one of the most undervalued cryptos in the entire realm right now. However, there's a couple of interesting things that have been brought to my attention recently, which I think make the community think about it differently. And I want to analyze that a little bit today. Plus, of course, covering some other crypto news. But this article right here, Arcane Research releases its crypto predictions for 2022, was sent to me a whopping number of times. It is insane how many people had remarks on exactly what they wrote in here, as they basically said there's a good chance that XRP will not be in the top 10 anymore in 2022. So guys, if you start to relate as to why, they said BNB is doing really well, Solana and Luna are doing really well, so it's going to keep crumbling piece by piece, down, 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 same thing for ADA. I think they, from some perspective, have a point that XRP could at one point or another become 10th or 11th in the same shape that XLM fell down to 28 right now. However, one thing they're grossly over, over, or I guess under mentioning is the fact that's causing this to happen. There's obviously one of the most critical lawsuits in crypto going on right now, which is making this coin perform a little bit less well. We've also seen this with Benjamin Cohen and a couple of other guys who have basically quoted out as saying XRP is not doing well, it's going to keep performing bad. People are not noticing the fact that this critical lawsuit obviously would have killed almost every single crypto to the point of no return. I think the majority of crypto would not have even survived just being there anymore would have gone down 99% and never come back up in comparison to XRP, which right now is at one fourth, the all time high price. That would be the same thing as saying, you know what? Bitcoin all of a sudden is alleged to be complete. Ah, I guess it's not really the same thing for a Bitcoin, right? It would kind of be the same thing for like a Cardano right now, which had a really massive allegation against them. Most likely the price would just crumble to the ground, unless for some strange reason, people would believe in it so much, so much, so much that they think the crypto is going to beat the SEC, which again is not a really easy thing, which once more shows the amount of faith people have in Ripple, have in the team, have in this crypto, and have against the SEC, because what they've been doing is not fair. And if you've done as much research as I have into the Ripple v. SEC lawsuit, then you know that what is happening right now just ain't fair. It really isn't. And I can talk about this for hours and hours and hours about how Jay Clayton definitely needs a couple of questions asked and how there might be some sort of bias, but that's not really too important. Once more, none of these videos are financial advice. Anyway, you always have to decide for yourself. All I want to quickly share on that regard is just, I think the majority of people who do this analysis are giving you a sort of narrative that doesn't really rely on the fact that XP has an important lawsuit going on that could be fixed next year. They're just looking at the XP performance as if it's any other crypto that doesn't have this extreme negative pressure on top of it. You can't really name anything that's as negative of a pressure for a crypto. I guess that's not a complete breach. Like, for example, Polygon had a, you know, admits the network was hacked. Hackers swiped 801,000 Matic. That type of stuff is something which happened to the protocol, which is more inherent to the crypto rather than an outside attack by the SEC, which is not warranted because once more, it's not really fair, if you ask me. Then again, it's also because I see these two things as being different but also not really factored in as much. Like a, um, a hacker swiping something is annoying, but it really isn't a game changer most of the time, unless it just hacked everything. But also, that's not really what they factored into a, you know, a, a falling out or anything like that. You don't really factor that in, unless it's like a longer-term effect, which this isn't. Point being, I think they're grossly underestimating XRP, let's put it like that. However, there's also another really shocking thing, which I think is very annoying going on. It's actually a lot of you guys, too. I'm going to blame a couple of you all that are watching this video right now. Let's keep it real. A couple of y'all in the comments section, I'm not really too happy with what you're doing. All right? Every single day, I wake up happy. Don't get me wrong. But some of you guys' actions here in the XRP community, they don't excite me. And what I'm talking about here is people who are trying to get me or trying to get people in the comments section to buy crappy xrp ledger tokens what i'm talking about is some of these guys get airdrops for free which all rights to you i would always say claim your airdrops if that's if that's making you money or if you think it's going to make you money or if it's free and it doesn't cost you a lot of work please do please do same thing for nfts please grab them if you can for free but please don't try to persuade others into buying your bag which you don't want to have because you got it for free and you want to make money off it because you're literally hurting somebody else for your own betterment 
And in some way, shapes, or forms, it's possible because the whole art of trading is you making money because somebody else buys it, right? You, you sell something, somebody else wants to buy it. But in this case, I don't really see this as ethical trading if you're selling garbage to somebody. You might say, yeah, but he wanted to buy it, right? Yeah, if you're selling the dream to somebody, like for example, the whole XR Doge craze. People were going insanely crazy over XR Doge, really trying to persuade me to talk about it on my channel, buy it. I'm not sure what the price is doing right now, but I know for a fact that this entire thing is basically a joke. There's not really too much longevity in it. And even if there is, it's not worth the risk to me. I would more so like to stay with my layer one XRP because I know the use case. I know a lot of people are sleeping on it because it's just literally that good. Why would I risk my money on something to that extent when I know it's not going to be one of my 100x gems with a very high probability of doing good, but it's mostly going to rely on it being a joke and hopefully somebody paying more money for it because they believe in it for a little bit longer than the next person, which to some degree is basically like Ponzi like, right? But let's not talk about that too much. Let's, let's stick to it for right now. And this is the people are more so relating XRP right now to Dogecoin, Shiba, all those meme coins, even though we shouldn't forget that XRP used to always be dubbed the banker's coin. Something is changing in the community, making it more of a meme coin nowadays because of all these uh, meme things being created on there. People are trying to associate it more. So make sure, guys, that you understand XP ain't that. It ain't really about the memes. It ain't really about the NFTs too much. It's a side thing. The main focus is still there. Now, a little side note about all of that. If you're sometimes wondering whether or not XP's technology is actually good, mind you that one of the cool creators of the XP Ledger and also the CTO of RIP right now is a freaking genius. A little side note. Uh, he also just, I guess, spoke out that uh, he, in 2011, actually optimized Bitcoin code. I'm not exactly sure too far as to what he did, nor do I really need to know, I guess. But I just want to quickly remind you guys that this man is a freaking genius. And you just need to kind of remind that for yourself. <laughs> you just need to remind that for yourself. Um, I also saw and talked more often about how I think Ripple is going to keep expanding their CBDC reach. With, of course, creating these CBDCs on their private layer or private ledger, I should say, but hopefully settling through the public ledger with their XRP, but uh, I guess expanding in the CBDC realm. We also saw Mexico, which is not necessarily connected to Ripple, but I hope that Ripple is going to just kind of get some connections going on the low end that we're not seeing. I really hope so. Mexico prepares to launch its own CBDC by 2024. Mexico announces plans to launch CBDC by 2024. The country wants to ensure that it's not left behind CBDC adoption. And all I can say about that is that is pretty nice. On December 29th, Mexico revealed that the country would roll out a new technical, or sorry, central bank digital currency by 2024, and we're going to the right direction, piece by piece, right direction, as we want, of course, this crypto, or I guess in this literal sense, digital currency adoption. Uh, Jacqueline Melnick, again, just talks about how she's going to interview uh, Jay Clayton. Not too much to be said about that, except for the fact that this is really coinciding with the Ripple VSC lawsuit. Binance just invested $113 million for initiatives in France, a step forward towards um, the next evolution. This is just, again, really, really smart from Binance's perspective, as I think from some perspective, they're trying to kind of lobby and say, hey, look at how much money we have. Look at what we can change here. Let us work on something. Another one of Binance's international forays has been France, where it is financing a 100 million euro initiative with industry group France Fintech labeled Objective Moon. The initiative was first announced in March and is aimed at bolstering the country's crypto and blockchain sector through innovation and education. To this end, Binance will start a research and development office in France and collaborate on an incubator program for startups and training programs, which ultimately will make them a lot more money, a lot more power, as a lot of things are going to be under Binance's little firm in that sense. But also, they're going to maybe put crypto more so on the map in France, getting an easier regulation to some degree. And MicroStrategy says it bought more Bitcoin during their December dip. Of course, the, there's most likely SEC filings, but basically they put up a new article over on Twitter. I, of course, shared that as well over on my own Twitter, which, by the way, you should follow. Link for that is down below. DDSDBC is the name on there. You guys should check it out. All right, it's a cool little profile that we have over here. You might want to check it out. The DDSDBC. Yeah. So uh, they said they're buying a freaking ton more Bitcoin. And the crazy part about it is sometimes you wonder where they get all the money from. And from another end, you're also wondering, how can this guy be so certain he's going to keep up, huh? I guess it's just because, again, as I've shown you guys every single live stream I do, if you zoom out, you'll start to notice it is really freaking bullish. Crypto as a whole is really freaking bullish. There's, It's such a small chance that things are going to go down longer term. It just looks as if things are going to keep going up as, as time moves on. And I'm also on that same end. 
it looks bullish and why would it not be? Why would all of a sudden people lose interest in crypto when the necessity and the use case is pretty damn obvious if you ask me? We talked about Polygon admitting that there was a hack. Not too sure about all of this, this is already about a little while ago, but I, I think they've just kind of confirmed it just quite, na quite now. Uh, then again, it's not really too big of a deal, not really too big of a problem. Matic caught the community's attention in 2021, recording a crazy increase in the year. In recent days, Polygon surprised its users by making a hard fork from nowhere in the early hours of December 5th, 2021, um, when Polygon's team suddenly released an unannounced update. This le fact led to the community to question what motivated the sudden upgrade. And after almost a month today, Polygon came out to explain what happened on their network. A group of whitehead hackers notified Polygon of a vulnerability in the Polygon POS Genesis contract on December 3rd. A group of whitehead hackers notified us, or I guess Immunify, which hosts our bug bounty of a vulnerability on the Polygon POS Genesis contract on December 3rd. As of December 4th, the Polygon team, white hackers and Immunify, worked hard to fix the vulnerability and started preparing to bring the necessary update onto the core network and yada, yada, yada. A malicious hacker was quick to notice the movement in the network on December 4th. Vulnerability was used to steal about 800,000 Matic tokens. You guys get it, right? You guys get it. So they're fixed now, so no worries. And also Phantom makes notable gains as layer one protocols gain adoption. Just wanted to quickly give a little shout out to Phantom as they really are doing their best. It's not getting the credit that it deserves, but if you guys want a video on Phantom, you can keep pressing that like button and keep letting me know in the comments section down below. I'm hyper today. I'm hyped up. I had a couple of really important days in the past year and a couple of really important days, of course, in the near future. As a lot of things are going down right now, crypto is at one of the most important spots in history. And it will remain that way for <laughs> the next couple of months, most likely, as crypto just keeps breaking records and records and records. Going to keep getting crazier. I'm hyped up. I'm hyped up for a lot of cool stuff. And I also am going to do a stream just now. It'll most likely be a stream before we actually upload this video because we're going to kind of switch it up a little bit. But I'm also hyped to make that right now. So, yeah, that's why I'm so excited, I guess. Guys, thank you all so much for stopping by and saying hi. See you guys again in another crypto video later today. And make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not already.